Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, I realize that I'm standing between you and lunch, uh, so sorry for that, though the muffins were really t tasty, so I guess that's okay. Um, so that that is me, and that's my photo. Everyone tells me that I don't look like my photo, apparently. Uh, so that's me. Um, let's start. Um, I was asked to tell you a bit more about Hyperledger, because apparently people... Um, in South Africa are not really aware of what Hyperledger is. Uh, I will start uh, telling you a bit about uh, my role as Director of Ecosystem, because usually people have no clue what Director of Ecosystem does. Uh, to be honest, I also am not sure what I do. Um, mostly uh, my role is uh, threefolded, I guess. Uh, I am responsible for uh, managing relationship with our existing members. Hyperledger is a uh, member-based organization. We are open source, so uh, anyone can join, uh, anyone can download the code. As you have heard uh, our previous speaker, uh, IBM is a member of Hyperledger. There are many more of you here that are members of Hyperledger. Probably you don't even know. Um, uh, I just met, met a gentleman uh, during the break who was from Deloitte. Deloitte also is a member of Hyperledger. Uh, there are uh, other people uh, other member companies, I'll talk about uh, about it a bit later. Um, so I manage relationship between our members, make sure that they stay connected, they understand what we do, understand our frameworks, uh, our help uh, navigate the use cases, what are good and bad use cases. I am also uh, the ears of Hyperledger, so I listen to what people do and help steer the um, community to the right uh, direction. And then I evangelize. I talk about what we do in Hyperledger, I talk what our members do, because I'm really, really proud when people do something cool with Hyperledger uh, as an open source community and as an uh, enterprise community. Uh, and I am responsible for the academic program uh, because I'm passionate about academia and bringing the enterprise uh, community and academia community together. Um, so what is Hyperledger? Well, it all starts with that simple realization. Collaboration is hard. If you ever tried going to, uh, taking someone on a date uh, or for a dinner and agreeing to which restaurant you want to go to, you know that even that decision is hard. Uh, and then when you are in a team and you want to decide on which project you want to work on or which solutions you want to build on, well, that's even harder. When it comes to competitive nature of uh, enterprises or developers that are all driving by their egos, it's even harder. Today on GitHub, we have 60 million different repositories and they're all being driven by one company and one developer. And this trend holds for uh, blockchain uh, innovation. And this is what Linux Foundation realized 16 years ago and uh, decided that they will change it. They will bring enterprises together and uh, create this common uh, shared um, uh, foundation uh, to provide uh, unparalleled support for the open source uh, technology. They will provide the backbone for an infrastructure for a governance model to build an ecosystem for enterprises to develop the um, uh, the uh, backbone the for uh, marketing, PR, and legal infrastructure uh, to develop open source enterprise set, uh, uh, setting uh, for enterprises to build. Um, open source code in uh, every major industries. And today we have projects in every major industry. Some of those projects you may have heard of, some of them you may have never seen before. Um, one of them uh, is maybe, let's see, have you ever heard about Node.js? How many of you have heard about Node.js? Okay, so I see some developers in the room then. Um, uh, let's encrypt. People have heard about Let's Encrypt? Okay, yeah, so it's the major uh, certificate authority. And then there are some that you've probably never heard of or reworked with, but never knew that it's a, a Linux Foundation project like Kubernetes, for instance. Um, and then um, about two years ago, 
uh, we have seen explosion of uh, Bitcoin and uh, sorry about four years ago we've, uh, or five years ago we've seen explosion of Bitcoin and everyone got really excited about cryptocurrency and we were buying and selling and getting really really rich, uh, rich on Bitcoin but then we saw that Bitcoin is not everything in fact we realized that what came before Bitcoin was blockchain uh, and then on top of blockchain was build Bitcoin uh, but blockchain is much more uh, than just a cryptocurrency it has many more many more interesting applications um, they are quite often discussed in the same uh, context but not necessarily the same thing there are many facets of distributed shared ledgers. What we really love about distributed and shared ledgers is that the uh, network nodes generate their own data and verify data, uh, and they are verified data generated by other net uh, nodes. They contain uh, historic records of verified transactions and are easily auditable. Um, they have all consent, distributed consensus that eliminates uh, costly and inefficient reconciliation. And these consensus mechanisms are different, right? The fact that we have a blockchain technology does not mean that we have to agree what that consensus mechanism has to be. We have uh, proof of stake, proof of work, uh, proof of elapsed time. There are various uh, bit, uh, blockchain um, technologies. And we have to realize that moving forward we won't have one single blockchain to roll them all it's not like this will be the case uh, there is no central repository this is very very important something that enterprises really love about blockchain that decentralization and uh, the networks are resi resilient uh, due to the power of cryptography and uh, integrity and there is a large economic uh, disincentive uh, for malicious actors. So all of this is really, really important because um, there is a certain need for trust. Uh, and that trust is kind of falls into, let's say, three, uh, three groups. Today we have the space divided into standards, the global governance, and the implementers. And we like to divide this kind of uh, uh, space. Uh, and if you think about it, you know, you have your IETF, W3C, and ISO, which really aim to um, provide the standard protocols and define the standard documents and really great, do, do a great job there. Uh, then you have the global governance uh, bodies like ICANN and IANA and you know, people differ on what they think about it, but they are doing a good job in providing the global go governance. Um, and then there are implementers, and we in Hyperledger see ourselves there. We provide that piping, then infrastructure for doing the really boring job of uh, providing the code that then anyone can take and uh, really. Uh, build on top of that. So uh, we didn't do anything, uh, uh, we didn't build applications, we are not a developer house. Uh, what we do is we do the piping in between. So now coming back to how Hyperledger started. Um, about two years ago when Bitcoin took its, its first wave, uh, People started coming to uh, Jim Zemlin, our executive director at uh, Linux Foundation, and said, hey, Jim, you know what? Bitcoin, have you heard about it? And Jim said, yes, I do read newspapers, as it happens. Uh, so, uh, yes, I heard about it. And they said, uh, and among them was uh, IBM uh, and Intel and BTCC and Digital Assets and uh, 30 other uh, member companies, uh, as well as uh, big names that I mentioned, as well as some smaller startups. Uh, and uh, they said, well, what do you want to do about it? And Jim said, well, Bitcoin does not fit that model of uh, bringing enterprises together to work on open source technologies for enterprises and advancing uh, what enterprises can do together to collaborate. Um, but the underlying technology, blockchain, is something that we can really work with. So let's 
see if this is uh, th this is how uh, how we can move forward. And that's how Hyperledger was started. Hyperledger was started to uh, provide the uh, to create an open source initiative to provide permissioned blockchains, per 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 permissioned for blockchain frameworks to the open source community. So we are all about permission blockchains and open source. And we bring enterprises together and open source community, we are not pay to play, uh, to develop those frameworks. Um, and uh, we uh, have a whole system of uh, frameworks today. We have grown pretty, qu pretty quickly. And uh, we really see a very global mass adoption. So if there's, you know, one liner that you should remember from this presentation, it is this. Uh, Hyperledger is a collaborative and global open source software community that is hosted by the Linux Foundation and advances blockchain technologies for business. And of course, there is a spectrum of blockchains that will continue to exist. And there are reasons for that. There is the permissionless public blockchain like Bitcoin and Ethereum that has a massive, massive um, adoption and there is a huge need for it because that's the one that anyone can join and anyone can read from it, right? This is the visibility and accessibility aspects of it. Then there are permissioned and private blockchains. And again, there is a good reason for it. If you think of medical record blockchains, well, I wouldn't want the, although you seem very nice and charming, I wouldn't want you to really access my medical records uh, just like that or write uh, something to my medical records just because you didn't like my talk and, you know, I put some hep C to my medical records. Uh, so that's why we do want permission private blockchains. Um, then there are permission public blockchains. Um, so some that are, um, think of university degrees, right? So only certain universities should be able to issue my, uh, my university degree, say, you know, uh, give me that uh, PhD in computer science from TU Berlin, and then you should all go and be able to ask, did, does she really have that PhD in computer science, or does she not? It should be public knowledge. Uh, on the other hand, you should also be able to check that I don't have a PhD from Harvard, though I really would like to have one. Um, permissionless, private, for instance, public voting. Any one of you here should be able to issue a vote saying, you know, this talk was great or this talk sucked. But only Sonia should be able to uh, count, uh, count the votes and uh, tell you that what was the result, because that's the way that voting count the, uh, works. So there is a spectrum. And there's also, you know, the uh, diffusion curve of innovation uh, bell uh, that we all love to put everywhere in every, you know, every industry. Um, so how does uh, that, does it work? Because we are all saying that it's a hype, it's not a hype, you know. Uh, some industries are better at, uh, at adopting it, some are worse. Definitely financial technology is the one that jumped on it. Uh, and I specifically mean financial technology and not payments and not uh, not other parts of uh, of uh, like the, the to do with money because these are separate things. So uh, fin financial technologies jumped on it and started adopting it very early on. Uh, supply chain and healthcare are the early adopters. Right now there is uh, HIMSS, uh, the biggest uh, healthcare uh, conference happening in Vegas. And uh, for instance, Hashed Health, our member, is has announced like a month ago that they are doing all of the uh, payments uh, uh, and insurance claims on Hyperledger Fabric uh, this year, and it's in production, like they are already doing it. So they have been developing the system for like two years. Uh, on the other, uh, the other thing is um, Change Healthcare, another member of Hyperledger, uh, also on Hyperledger Fabric is doing uh, all of the medical records uh, sharing and uh, some of the 
um, uh, some of the, um, uh, uh, the supply chain, uh, pharmaceutical supply chain through, uh, through the blockchain as well. So these are really early adopters. And then uh, I think that the next, the early majority is logistics, insurance, and government. Smart Dubai, uh, member of ours, by 2020, everything will be blockchained. So in Dubai, by 2020, all of the government uh, and citizen stuff will be on the blockchain. It's pretty insane. Uh, Ministry of Lithuania has joined Hyperledger because they want to move all of their financial stuff on the blockchain. Uh, pretty crazy, in my opinion, but pretty exciting as well. Um, so yeah, you know, a bit of bragging. Uh, we launched two years ago. Uh, I said 30 when we started. Today, actually, this slide is a bit out of date because I had to submit it a while ago. Uh, 226 now uh, members. So we are really growing very fast. We have five frameworks, four tools. Uh, we have two production releases, Hyperledger Fabric and Hyperledger Sawtooth. Uh, and we have a very big community. Uh, we have meetups all over the world. As of yesterday, we launched a meetup in Cape Town. I'm very sorry to say we don't have a meetup in Johannesburg. Meetups are places where people come and talk all about you know, what is happening in Hyperledger, what are the different frameworks, how can you install it, develop it, or what can you do to really kind of speed up the process. Uh, these are all run by the community, so it's all open source. We don't provide it, like kind of the funding or whatever. We don't sponsor them, so you have to find someone local to do that. We have a local champion in Cape Town, but we don't have local champion in uh, Johannesburg. Uh, these are the frameworks uh, that we have. So these is th these are the code bases. As I'm saying, you can go online right now and download it. It's not like you, we have to be a member to do that. Fabric, you've heard all about it in previous talks, so I won't talk, repeat it. Sawtooth is an interesting one, which uses proof of elapsed time uh, as the consensus mechanism. Uh, Indy is uh, the identity project that we have uh, that is coming from Evernim and Sovereign Foundation that is really cool and very exciting. Hyperledger Iroha comes from our uh, Asian partners and uh, is focused on mobile devices, is super lightweight, like has very tight memory control. It has been developed in uh, C++, uh, uses Sumeragi as consensus mechanism, it's for Byzantine fault tolerant, and you can actually run SPV proofs on mobile devices in Raspberry Pis, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we have Borrow, which is an uh, Ethereum project that we have, uh, focuses on implementing the uh, so Solidity smart contracts uh, in open source. Uh, takes away all of the uh, you know, tokens and all of the cryptocurrency stuff, and just takes the, uh, enter the kind of the enterprise side of Ethereum uh, uh, and implements that. And uses Tendermint as the uh, smart contract uh, as the consensus mechanism. But really what Borrow is, is a library for the other project. So you can use Borrow with sort of with Fabric and use Solidity smart contracts in those other projects. And then we have Composer, Explorer, and Cello, which are the tools for the other projects. You heard about Explorer, uh, 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 Composer, Explorer, and Cello are like your DevOps tools. Quilt is really, really cool one. Um, I think we have Stefan somewhere here and uh, Adrian from Ripple. Uh, these guys have uh, kind of initiated that project together uh, with NTT. Uh, it's an interoperability project, so it's the interledger pr pr protocol uh, implemented in Java, uh, which we're really, really excited about and really grateful. Um, so that's really our focus on how do we merge all of those efforts, right? Because we have like five frameworks here, and then there is the Ethereum guys, and the Bitcoin guys, and the um, Quorum guys, and um, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing like five other projects right now out there in the world. So 
And I'm not saying that our projects are the best, because they are probably not. So how do we merge all of those roles? How do we merge or, or kind of transact between each other? So interoper interoperability is really important to everyone. Now, I've been talking for like 20 minutes, and I haven't uh, covered probably half of the important information, and I've, I'm like super fast in talking. So how do we now get for all of this in a slightly slower speed? Well, I have something for you. It's called the edX course. You can go online. It's a self-paced, uh, free of charge, and uh, the online course. It's on uh, the edX platform. Uh, currently, you will be one of the 65,000 people who, sub uh, who subscribed uh, to it. Um, not everyone finished it because it's self-paced, right? So, you know, you subscribe and then you never finish it. Uh, but still, it's there. You can do it. Um, it's really good. Uh, it's like very, starts very, very high level. Uh, what is the blockchain? What are the like basics and so on? And then uh, after a while, it digs deep, deeper into the technical stuff. So if you really like the nits and bits, it actually walks you through how to implement um, uh, your or deploy your blockchain in two use case uh, into onto two of our frameworks, Salesforce and Fabric, um, and uh, just compares them together. So that's also pretty nice, I guess. Um, yeah, so just do that. Um, check out our web page because uh, that's where all the information is. Surprise, surprise. Um, it's simple, hyperledger.org. Um, confusingly, if you want to email us, uh, all of our emails are at linuxfoundation.org, not at hyperledger.org, but that's a side, side thing. A uh, few ways to participate are these, which are mailing lists, Attend our Hackfest and uh, upcoming events. The next uh, Hackfest will be in Amsterdam in June. They are, again, open to public. You don't have, you can just register and come over. Uh, uh, come to, uh, go to our Wiki, engage in discussions on Rocket Chat, because uh, that's where all of the discussions are. Um, find bugs and uh, fix bugs. We love people who fix bugs. Um, participate in working groups. We have like 12 working groups uh, in healthcare, uh, in white papers, in s several like more technical ones if you want technical ones. So that's all of that. And of course, we have community resources. So go there, watch webinars, videos, training materials. We have uh, associate members that are doing training if you want like proper official training for your company. Um, so that's uh, that's a lot. And soon we are announcing a vendor, uh, uh, sorry, a job board. So people that will look for developers, if you're a developer, look up there because you'll be able to actually find jobs and internships. And we just announced an internship program. So if you're a student or just a person interested in an internship, look up our website because you we have 12 positions with Hyperledger for a summer internship and it's uh, remote, so you don't have to move. So that, like, please look that up. They are pretty cool topics. And yeah, if you're interested, who is a member? Because people sometimes ask. And that's the last, the last two slides, so now I can take questions. Thank you. Yes, we have a very active project with universities. Uh, so come up to me and we can talk. Uh, any other questions? Or I was just wondering, what's the, the primary development language of the Hyperledger? I saw uh, it was, is it Golang? Uh, the, the, the programming language. Yeah. Uh, so the question was, what's the primary pro programming language? It depends on the framework. Uh, so uh, in case of Fabric, it is uh, JavaScript and Go. Uh, in case of um, Sawtooth, it is uh, Python. In case of 
Uh, in the, it is uh, Python. In case of uh, borrow, it is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, in case of, uh, in case of, uh, so I'm uh, so, sorry. Aroha, it is C. So it depends on 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 the developers. We are not very strict on that. Yep. So I wanted to ask, how easy is it to partner with you guys to start up probably hyperledger meetings in Zimbabwe, Harare? Uh, Probably we've got several people who are just interested and want to partner with you guys to get things rolling so that at least we get more developers involved. So if you want to start a meetup, uh, is that the case? You yeah, want The meetup and also to get in contact with you guys to probably get more information, probably to find ways of educating more people. Sure. So uh, in order to start a meetup, uh, you send us an email uh, to meetup at hyperledger.org uh, and uh, we can talk. Uh, basically, it's a very simple thing. Uh, you have to find the space uh, for that, uh, like a, a physical space. Uh, we set up a, a, a meetup.com platform for you. Uh, and then you have to start organizing meetups and topics for the meetup and uh, or organizing the people for it. But we can talk about it afterwards. I can tell you more about it. And if anyone else is interested to organize a meetup in your uh, your city, uh, please let me know. Uh, and I can tell you if there is one uh, if already existing or if not, then I'll be happy to talk with you about it. I'll ask the last question yeah. then. Um, are there any government projects running on Hyperledger right now around the world? Uh, yes, so Smart Dubai has uh, a bunch uh, of projects running on uh, that. So the state of Illinois is issuing birth certificates and land titles uh, on, the, on the blockchain. Um, then um, there is, so th th these are the two major ones. Um, then we are currently working with Ministry of Lithuania uh, on their future projects. Uh, Ministry uh, of the Polish Ministry of Digitalization also wants to work with us, but these are not in deployment. Um, so, but, but there is like a lineup of uh, governments that is just kind of rolling out projects. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Marta. Thank you for uh, sharing your insight with us.